You know what time it is, right? No. What time is it? I don't know. You know what I said last night. You weren't even there last night. How did you know? Yeah, I was. I was there. I saw that thing. Tell the viewers what you smoked last night. They can. <laughs> Yo, what up? We are in Memphis, Tennessee today for Stupid Cold and it stopped raining just now. So we brought the camera out. I don't know what the fuck we're gonna do today. I have some shoots that I need to get done and hopefully for the first time on the channel, we'll actually like talk you guys through what I do when I shoot. Um, but yeah, let's go walk around, look at some of the cars that are here right now, check out some of the booths, say hi to some people and I don't know, hopefully some shit will happen today and it'll be an entertaining video. And thank you to Dallas, he is recording me today, which is fucking amazing because I hate recording myself. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> he has donuts. Treyway. Fucking Treyway. What, ki what kind of donuts? I mean, I'm appreciative of any, but let me see what we got here. What are we working with? What do we got on the bottom one? The same thing? Oh, yeah, let me get some of that glaze. Get some of that fucking heat. Dog. Oh! I'm just fucking take it to the, the BG tent, bro. Some donut balls. Dallas, you want one? Yes. All right, bet. Yeah. Let me, oh, fuck. Let me stack that yeah, junk. Yeah, double that shit, bro. Stack that junk. Run that shit. Because we're in Memphis, you have to say junk. Yeah. Where are you from? Uh, Oklahoma City. Oh, shit. We're going to go wander around, take a look at some of the stuff that's here. This, the show is like on the drag strip, so just because it just rained, there's like all these crazy reflections on the ground and it looks fucking sick for pictures. So a little bit later in this video, we're gonna switch onto the other camera, which thankfully somebody brought me another camera so that we can record. Um, and I'm gonna talk you guys through how to shoot dope event coverage. Um, Cause when you shoot at car shows, it's usually pretty hard to like work around what's there. But if you have stuff like this, it makes it a little bit easier. And I wanna give you guys a couple of tips and tricks on like shit that I'll do to make a event picture look more interesting than someone else's. But let's go look at cars. Or like, I don't even know that we have to look at anything else today because this is the only thing that I'm here for. I saw this thing last night and, hi Grant. It, it gave me a raging fucking boner. Fucking look at this shit. Oh. That doesn't even look like a Honda. If it looks like we're walking really weird, it's because uh, the track is like flooded. I, uh, I'm smart and I wear old vans. Dallas is not. Are those real Yeezys? No, they're fake. Oh, okay, that's fine then. Just fuck, fuck them up real quick. We uh, we fired the old cameraman. Dallas has uh, fake Yeezys on, and yeah, bro, he doesn't want to get them wet. Yeezys, bro. So I hired a new one. We have Grant. Oh, yep. <laughs> he uh, he filmed a couple other vlogs for like a couple years ago, and now he's uh, he's back. But this time, you don't have to listen to him. <laughs> because the microphone's on me and not on you. <laughs> Sorry, we can't hear you, Grant. Did you say something? <laughs> I don't know why you're looking at that Alfred. I'm trying to look at this fucking mini. Look at this shit. That is fucking fantastic. I don't really know what to say about it other than it's fucking dope. But let me say this. Look at the back. I love, like, I don't really care for slaps ever, but I love that he actually kept kept like a consistent color theme across all of the slaps. Like, got the cream, got the cream. It's kind of a creamy butt right there. You got lick my butt and send dudes. Is that a mini thing? Like, hey, now that y'all can hear me, like, I'm in Fox. But I miss I, you guys. I fired that camera guy and we're back to the old one. Look, if you guys want to work for me, apply below. I can't pay you because I'm broke, but just apply anyway. It's uh, suckmydick at gmail.com. Anyway, look at this thing. It's 
It's got a Hemi in it. All right, while we're here, we have to take a fucking good ass look at this thing because this color is insane. This is one of the cars I'm shooting this weekend. Um, my buddy Destin just finished up wrapping this thing. Yes, it's a wrap, but it's not final wrap. It's Autoflex, so it's like sprayable wrap and you can like wet sand it and shit. And you can custom make colors. I'll talk about it another time, but it's fucking sick. And if you didn't know about it, take a fucking look at this. Purple, green, red, pearl over like a Nardo gray. Fuck with that. Hey, is this yours? Yeah. It's just fucking nice, man. I saw it last night and I was like, <laughs> bro, clean. Is that, are those chrome? Yeah, true. I'll turn it off. Fire. I love the cage. Like everything looks just fucking spotless, man. It's killer. Shit, hood dump too? Boy. Oh shit, I like this. Trunk setups and a hatch are fire. I like that it's white so you can actually like see it. You guys know I like Mustangs. Don't take this for granted, I fucking hate Mustang owners. But that is sick. Every, literally everybody that wants to like stance a Mustang jumps into the, uh, the new edge body shape because I don't know why, but I don't see many SN95s. That is like the first one I've seen and that is fucking dope. The SKFs are perfect for that shit. I swear to God, every car that I'm picking out today has chrome wheels. I'm becoming like really anal and ju I, just get chrome wheels. If you're buying polished wheels still, what are you doing? You guys know I got a little thing for uh, CTSVs and uh, I'm not a big fan of coops, but you put anything on the ground and I'll like it. Oh, we, oh, row forms. Three piece KPSs, brushed. I like that a lot. Brushed with the gray is, is fire. You said it was a Louisville car? Yes. So that's pretty local to me, that's dope. He came. If, if you own this, hit me up and come shoot. So, you guys want to know something interesting? He has no 1320 video. Well, one of the guys that runs it owns this thing. So, for all of you guys that are into fast ass fucking cars and think the stance cars are gay as shit, fuck you. I guess it's not like actually like a stance stance car, but like the dude films fucking videos of fast as fuck cars and he drives this. So stance is the way, sorry. He also has a Harley Quinn. I've never met Fred, but if you're watching this, hey, your car's dope. Dog, where'd you get that fucking garbage ass shirt from? That's just, that shit's trash. Just kidding. Thank you, I love you. Okay, this is sick. We got a bagged Benz on a trailer with a bagged truck. Fucking goals. All right, so this is my first chance to actually get to see this car in person. I have been excited for a few years to see somebody do this. If you didn't know, Mustangs have, or older, older generation Mustangs have solid rear axles, which means you cannot get any camber. It doesn't matter how much you lower it. And that's why like a lot of these end up looking kind of super weird. But the Cobra of the new edge generation came with IRS, independent rear suspension. So you could adjust camber. So this guy swapped the IRS out of a Cobra into this and now has matching camber on a new edge Mustang. And it is the fucking coolest thing I've ever seen. Fun fact, I have always wanted an E36. So at some point, expect one. All right, so 
Found somebody to record, thankfully. Tyler, Lee Media is taking over. He is uh, helping me out, but we are gonna walk down and I'm basically gonna show you guys how I will go about shooting pictures of cars at a car show. Now, usually when you are taking pictures at a car show, like the cars are just parked. You don't have any control over how they're parked um, unless you're organizing the show, but um, so you kind of just have to work around what you have. And today works out really well because it rained this morning and there is puddles everywhere. So you get these amazing reflection shots and we're gonna be able to get some pretty decent pictures, but I wanna show you guys a couple little things that you can do to basically get a shot that other people maybe won't get. It's super easy to walk up to a car and take a picture, but if you think differently, you can kind of figure out a way to get a picture that nobody else is gonna get. So, let's go. So, first subject, on a record. I've already shown this in the video. Uh, this, is, this is easily my favorite car here today. Um, now, it's not exactly like parked in any way that is different to how any of the other cars are. So most people are basically just gonna walk up to it and get that like three quarter shot and that'd be it. Um, I'm gonna figure out on the fly as we're recording this so you can kind of see like how I think about it as I'm going up to it. Um, but basically, yeah, I'm just gonna start taking pictures and then when I notice things that I think that I can do like differently, I'll point it out. Liam takes really good photos and really good video. Thanks, bud. This is very... That's um, all we need. We didn't yeah, need anything else. You can go. <laughs> Before I start taking pictures of the car, I'll run you through what we're shooting with here. Um, I have my A7S II, which, if you want an A7S II, don't buy it. It's a piece of shit. It's a primarily video camera, but it's actually garbage for video. So, be like Tyler and buy the A7 III. It's a way better camera. But, the most important thing is we have Tyler's Sigma 35 f1.4 art lens. Now, this is a super, super sharp lens, even at f1.4. Um, I don't think any time that I've ever used this lens, I've ever shot anything above 1.4 because it's just so fucking sharp. Um, but yeah, that's what we're shooting with. Number one thing, if you're taking pictures of cars, polarizer. What this does, which actually you can demonstrate on the camera, if you point it towards the car or, or the sky, point it towards the car, you turn the filter, you see how things change. So basically what I try to do is usually, it depends on what color the car is, but usually you want to like have the windshield be dark. It just makes it look so much better. Um, polarizers basically change the way that the light goes into the lens and changes how reflections are seen. I don't know the exact science, don't quote me on it, but it makes shit look cool. So you need to fucking get one. And if you don't use a polarizer, your photos could be so much better if you did. But anyway. So conditions are not ideal right now because the uh, the sun is out, unfortunately, but we'll make it work. Black car in the sun usually causes some pretty harsh reflections off of the car. Okay, so one little thing that I'm gonna do with like composing a shot like this is obviously I'm shooting vertically and I'm trying to get as much reflection in as possible, but there are certain like levels that you'll hold the camera at that are gonna look completely different. Um, so if I was to take a shot higher like this, um, you can obviously see in the background there's like the big signs up at the top and you don't necessarily want those because they're ads at a racetrack. It doesn't add to the picture and somebody's selling something in it. You don't want that in your picture. So when you're at an event, you kind of have to work around things like that. So by shooting at like a lower angle, let me just grab focus real quick. So if we shoot at this lower angle like this, we're able to kind of hide those behind the car for the most part. Um, and obviously I can't completely avoid all of the ads. That's just part of it when you're shooting in a public space so you don't have control over it. Um, but doing what you can to try and hide things that do not add to an image is definitely gonna help you. I just noticed this angle that actually works extremely well. Um, when shooting black cars in harsh sunlight, uh, a black car is basically a mirror, so anything that surrounds it is gonna reflect off of the paint. So what I kind of like to do is actually shoot towards the sun um, and it almost silhouettes the car a little bit. It's, it's a lot harder to work with in post-production, um, but kind of helps with the reflections on the paint. Doesn't reflect as much because obviously the sun is behind it and it's not reflecting off of the things directly in the side. So this angle that I have right now, I'm basically trying to hide the other cars that are behind this car, behind it, so you cannot see it. And, uh, by doing that, it looks a little bit cleaner, and then you have this like dope sun flare coming in from the right. I'd like to try and hide this building behind it, 
Um, but one of the things you can kind of look for is if you shoot at too low of an angle, if a car is not 100% laid out on the ground, you will see light under the car. And that's kind of a pet peeve that I have with some things is, is uh, being able to see light under the car is a no-go for a stance car. Um, but sometimes it can kind of work. And right now, if I take a really low angle shot right here, it actually looks really good. Um, if I get it just far enough over this way on the edge of the shadow right here, I get the, uh, the sun come through on the one side. But I have to get just a little bit closer. And then the building behind it is covered. Fire. There's not a whole lot that you can do with that as opposed to like getting a whole shot of the car that's gonna look any different from like pictures other people would get. So what you wanna do when you look for that shot at a car show is you wanna look for the car that is parked differently from other cars. Um, or even, I like to look for things where you kind of have cars parked in front of others and you can use those cars at the front as foreground for the car that you're shooting towards the back. Um, and you kind of like look through the other cars to, to do that. Those are gonna be the shots that look more interesting, especially if you're shooting a, a low aperture lens. Um, and yeah, really we're just trying to find a way to get more interesting pictures out of a situation where you have no control over the variables. Sorry, right, I didn't mean to get in your shot. Yeah. Heck yeah. How you doing, man? What a man. Good to meet you, dude. When looking for something that is a little different, granted, this car is parked exactly the same as the other cars, but whatever car was parked right here has left. So it leaves that extra little bit of room that you can kind of work with. Now, the downside of this specific shot is that the sun's right there, the car's right there, and as you can see, if you walk over this way a little bit, you'll be able to... Shadows. The best thing you can do is basically get a low enough angle where you are not casting a huge shadow, but just high enough where the shadow is not in the bottom of the frame. Kind of difficult when you're shooting vertically, but this right here is a good angle because you can basically get a low enough angle where you cannot see any of the cars behind it. And like the key thing is you want to try and hide it and make it look like it's not fucking at a car show. So if you can hide the cars that are behind it, like so, Makes it look a little better. I like to leave a little bit of space around a car when I'm taking a picture of it. I like to what, have what I call breathing space around a subject. Um, just, you know, a little bit of space around the edges. And then um, as far as like composure, I kind of like to have the, if I'm shooting vertically, which most of the time I am, I like to have the car slightly lower on the frame, but not too, too much sky. Um, use the rule of third lines. If you're able to have them on your display, I like to use those and like if you're shooting vertically, the bottom line will basically be the where I'll line it up either on the middle of the wheels or somewhere between the wheels and the headlights. And that kind of puts my car right where I want it on a vertical shot. Other things that I'm paying attention to while I'm taking this is that you're gonna have other cars in the background over to the left side of the frame. And I'm trying to move the camera around just enough to basically pick something that is as least distracting as possible from that background. So right what I'm looking at right now, I have two red cars over there, which are hugely contrasting to the color of this car. And I don't really want those there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is obviously just shift over this way a little bit and basically just try and get this to block it. And there is a white and a blue car in the background from here, which is a lot better than two red cars. And also keep an eye out for people walking through. Uh, it's definitely better to have shots where there isn't people in the background, like this dude holding his phone and recording very close. Obviously, I'm not gonna take the picture right now, but um, it's easy to just, if you're trying to rush and get pictures quickly, to just walk up and get the picture. But you really gotta pay attention to the things that are around it. If you want the best picture that you can at a show, you're gonna pay attention to how many people are walking through the frame, what's in the background, anything that may distract your view from the actual subject itself, uh, how you're composing it. Just really think about what you can do to make that shot look different from somebody else's. And some people will just get lucky and they'll just take a quick picture and there won't be any people in it, but it's better to be thinking about it and get it right in camera than try to fix it in post. ZJ just pointed out that he, uh, well, he noticed a potential picture while walking up to a car. There is a twisted T laying on the ground. And so the picture, he's got one picture basically where it's in focus on the wheel. You probably have to send me these pictures. Yeah, I'll just send you no, There's one picture where it's focused on the wheel and you see that. And then the next picture, it is focused on the can on the ground. Hey, where are the owners at? 
Same. Same, buddy. Um, so the nice thing with this is when you're like making a social media post, you can do it as like a swipe through thing on Instagram. So you'd have like one picture like on the can and then the next picture on the wheel. It's just something that a little different. And right, it, it, cool it's stuff. good foreground, you know, having that focus on the wheel and there's just something in the foreground to basically give depth to an image. Obviously the can is not fucking 10 feet <laughs> next to the car. It is small, but you're able to tell that from it being out of focus and the car in focus. It just gives more depth to an image as opposed to just having the main subject in it. You want something else, you know. If you're shooting vertically, you have all this space above the car, all this space below the car. Why not find something to just like put in that space? Don't force it. If you walk up and you see a can laying there, you know, mix it up, do that. It looks cool. All right, so. I'm not gonna go too in depth, even though I feel like I already did. I have a bad habit of when I talk about stuff that I'm interested in, I talk way too much. Sorry, and also at the same time, maybe it helped you guys. But anyway, um, we're gonna wrap up this section of the video, but I hope it was a little bit helpful for you guys. Uh, feel free to go and try some of this stuff out and uh, let me know how it goes for you. I wanna, I wanna see some results. Tag me on Instagram or whatever, you know. Um, but appreciate it. Okay, so without going too in depth with today's video, um, I just wanted to give you guys a basic outline of kind of what I am doing and what I'm thinking while I'm taking pictures at an event. Um, for the most part, I wish my dogs would shut up. For the most part, the editing side of things is where you're really gonna separate yourself from other photographers. Um, when you have no control over the variables of where the car is parked, what the weather's doing, et cetera, um, and then most of the control, most of the creative control that you're gonna have is in the editing suite. I'm not gonna give you guys a step-by-step -step basis of how I edit pictures. Um, I feel like that's cheating. I've spent years developing my style. Um, so I don't wanna go into that too much, but developing your own style that makes you stand out from other photographers is definitely going to help um, and if you guys are interested in me doing this further um, i would like to film more of these videos basically talking about the way that i think when i go to shoot um, obviously in future it'd be nice if i could have a secondary camera set up and have somebody else film while i am just taking care of shooting um, and we do it on some like private shoots so I can talk about how I go about finding locations um, for specific cars, how I deal with working with specific colored cars, um, compositions, etc., settings, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, if that's something you guys would be interested in, let me know in the comments below. Like this video, I do really appreciate it if you do. Um, and also go and cop some of the merchandise. You guys saw the promo video at the start of this video. Um, bunch of new stuff on the store. Very excited about it. Um, and I need your support to make bigger and better. Ow! I just fucking punched that thing. I need you guys' support to do bigger and better things for the channel and basically make better content for you guys. So um, yeah, I would massively appreciate it. The store is in the top of the description, lepautomotive.com forward slash shop. Um, yeah, thanks for watching today's video and tune in tomorrow for another video at Stupid Cold. We'll see you then. Thanks for watching, guys.